Hey, we're back. Uh, we're going to be looking at Intel. Uh, so we're going to stick with semiconductors uh, until we kind of just close out uh, the stocks of interest in this one. So it looks like we have, we'll be looking at three more before we move on to the next uh, sector or just category that I have marked out. Uh, Intel, we last left off on the 25th and it was right at 25. I personally picked some up there. And uh, so let's just at least update the date for now and we'll, uh, we'll check out the stock and where it left off. Uh, so right away, this one's seen some growth. So we're down here in the far right. Uh, and this was kind of expected. Uh, we thought this would kind of trend with AMD and NVIDIA, uh, which we previously did a video on. And those two both saw big changes in growth. This one, similar to those. Uh, let's see, about $4, maybe like $3 in the past week. So uh, close to 10%, probably a little over 10% growth in that one week. So that's really good for Intel. Um, currently, so we'll update the current price. So it's currently at 29. I'm just going to clear out uh, the color here. So no fill. Uh, so again, uh, originally we marked out that $30 was like the buy point and if we zoom out the only reason I had it there uh, I guess I really just had it there because that seemed to be a resistance line so you would think I would have had it differently because we just looked at uh, three years but maybe if I zoom out more yeah, I, I guess it really just hovered around that point even if we go back into the late 2010s. Um, but yeah, it's, it's acting as resistance right now. And let me zoom back out just a little bit. Okay, so this is like the past two years now. Uh, so right now it does seem like it's continuing to just trade, trade sideways between 30 and 25. Uh, we'll see how the next week goes. I, I think for this one, uh, if you're not familiar with Intel, um, Intel right now is definitely getting beat up a lot. And uh, you can see the, the sharp decline over the past couple years. I think when I was following this one before, back in like 2021 and early 22, I'm pretty sure I was marking out like 40, 45 to be a good time to buy. And um, that was just due to long-term history. Like 40 seemed to be the low for this one. And um, then of course it just broke through. And the reason for that was the lack of sales, AMD taking shares from, or sales from the company. And then all of a sudden they brought back their CEO, Pat Gelsizer which uh, helped Intel become the, the great company it is today. It's just when he left, and I'm not sure exactly when he left, but I guess after he left, Intel kind of put their, took their foot off the gas and really stopped innovating. And that allowed companies like AMD to gain market share from that. Uh, when Pat came back, his thing was they need to begin innovating again, which is the smart play. It's just in order to innovate again, they need to spend money. And that's something Intel was not doing for the previous number of years until we came back. And so what Intel is trying to do is they're going to try to compete with TSM. And for them to do that, they need to not take steps anymore, but they need to jump. They need to make jumps and leaps to catch them and so that's kind of the process and that's why they're shrinking so rapidly in terms of stock price is because people are seeing that Intel is now spending lots of money to innovate and when they're spending all this money that makes their balance sheet go down because uh, debt is going to go through the roof because they're trying to build new plants and facilities and uh, buy new machines too and so basically what their plan and the reason why I'm choosing to have interest in them too is because I can see the vision uh, I do see the vision of what Intel's trying to do here it's just for all of this to kind of
play out the way it's you know designed to is it's going to take a number of years for them to actually reach that point and even when they reach this point that they're uh, striving for right now the worry is they're, they're going to be so far behind that even if they can reach that desired end goal that they want that they have projected for themselves in two years who knows how much technology will have advanced in that same time frame of course you have to imagine intel will uh, be flexible in their plans so if you know they're striving to to this point a and technology changes they'll have to update their new desired end goal point and hopefully they do understand that i'm sure they do i mean these are uh you know this is their job they're, they're going to be taking it seriously but uh, one thing that I do like about Intel even with all the bad news is um, number one they if depending on how you're looking at it you might see it as a bad thing or a good thing is that they've cut their dividends a little bit I'm, I'm not sure about the percentage but um, they did cut their dividends which I guess in the short term is bad but long term if you see their end goal it makes sense I mean they can't have these high dividends when they're trying to be very innovative and catch up to the the leading uh, products like AMD and Nvidia so what they did is they're they're cutting their dividends so that they can retain some of that money so that they can fund these expenditures that they're gonna have in the near future so they're they're taking that money so that they can reinvest in themselves, which I do like that idea. And then the other news that was, I thought, it, I mean, that this is how you're gonna make these jumps is uh, the latest technology is the two nanometer chip. Uh, and I might be getting that wrong. It might be three nanometers, but ASML has come up with a new design where they can produce that two nanometer chip. And so what Intel said is, okay, we're just gonna buy that two nanometer chip uh, machine. And you know TSM's gonna be doing that too. So Intel's trying to jump from what it can currently make, which is maybe like the seven nanometer chip. Well, they're just gonna buy the machines to go right into the two nanometer chip. And hopefully they can gain back market share through that uh, idea. And it makes perfect sense, I mean, they're in that industry so it shouldn't be that hard of a shift to do they'll they'll need the personnel of course and they can most likely just take some from TSM but what Intel what I like and what's a very high probability of them doing is they'll be able to take shares from TSM which we own that too so that's uh, good and bad it should just balance out really but then they should also begin competing again with AMD and those more innovative products and NVIDIA, they'll compete with them. And of course, we'll have those two in our stock portfolio. So those should all balance out and uh, continue to grow just as an industry. Because again, if we look at the total addressable market for the industry, I don't have a problem with that because the whole industry is growing together. So if we just have a couple of these uh, high flyer stocks in that industry, we're gonna be okay with that because uh, currently the projection is that that industry should over double, I think in the next like three to five years. Uh, it might be 10 years, but I, I think it was like three to five years. So it, it really shouldn't matter who we have in the industry. It, it's gonna grow close to double and depending on if we can make the right picks, it should more than double in that short period of time. And so, Again, sticking with Intel, they should be able to take back market share from AMD, NVIDIA. They'll be able to take some from TSM because they're going to uh, reintroduce the foundry market. I think they even bought a foundry, a very small foundry company to help with that transition into that segment of their business. And uh, the one piece that I, I, I'm not sure if people are missing out on, but Intel is a very friendly company, I'll say, with the U.S. government. And with that in mind, they basically have the U.S. government helping them. And along that front is they want to, like, expand into Europe. 
And so they're getting help from like uh, the European Union's CHIPS Act. They're getting help from the United States CHIPS Act. So uh, of course that that didn't all kind of pan out uh, to its end yet. But the idea is that, you know, Intel's putting forth, I don't know, we'll just say $40 billion in expansion efforts. Well, hopefully, based on these CHIPS acts, they're going to get that money back. And that $40, that $40 billion expansion effort is really going to turn out to be, say, like $20 billion because the European governments and the American governments, they're just going to reimburse them once the the factories are up and running and they'll get these tax credits in, in one way or another and it'll just play out that way. But if we look at and Intel's uh, PE ratio is at about 14.5. I think that's probably fair considering the state of the stock right now. Uh, it's, I'm actually kind of surprised it's this high. I would have thought it'd be like 10 or 11, but uh, based on the past week, I guess that makes sense of you know, it grew so fast. If it was back down here at like 25, 26, maybe it would be in the, around like 11 or 12, which makes more sense to me. Um, but overall, um, I still think this one's at a decent time to buy. I think we could see this one pull back down to like 25. That's when I'd probably add more into this. Uh, I know I added in this when we checked back a couple weeks ago. I'm gonna mark this one again as an orange one, uh, which means it's it's close to a buy. I, I think this one again has a, a good chance to pull back, and if it does, you know we can just add in a couple more shares, just kind of continue to build this out, and hopefully, probably not, may, maybe in the later half of this year, and hopefully certainly next year we'll actually see this one begin to trend upwards into like the 30s, possibly hit 40 again. And uh, that'll be great because we'll double up in that time. So if we just look at our tracker here, uh, so we have uh, Intel's at about 29. I'd be looking to get this one close to 25, but anything less than 30, I think that's a great time to buy this one and just hold it for probably a couple years if you can wait that long. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts on Intel and. Uh, what their strategy should be and you know what what your thoughts are in terms of buying selling or holding this one for the long term and um, Otherwise, please like subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye